Welcome to lesson four. Today I'm going to talk about how to play open strings. I realize this may seem a little bit um, too easy, like what's so difficult? You pull the bow across the string. But even in something so easy, there's a million and one things that can go wrong. So just a brief review. Lesson one was putting the violin at an angle to your, right, uh, to your left arm so that they make a kind of letter X. Another sort of um, cue that you're doing it the right way is if this, which is called the button, is not pressed into your neck. You'll notice that my finger, my index finger, is laying along the ribs of the violin, and when I put the violin on my shoulder, my finger is not crammed into my neck. Lesson two was how to hold a bow, and again, a brief review, your thumb under the bow, your second finger in front of the thumb, your first and third flanking your second, your fourth resting on top of the bow, but slightly behind them, so that the fourth finger does not risk slipping off the bow. And in playing open strings, what I would like to direct your attention to is sound quality. Now, this is something that your teacher, whether that's me or a private teacher, will work on endlessly. But just so that we establish a common vocabulary, Every time that a student makes a bad sound and I ask them what they didn't like about it, they invariably describe a bad sound as scratchy. For me, scratchy is something very specific. Scratchy is when the sound does this. That is literally a scratch. But a sound that does this, although it is useful for some very specialized pieces, is still a bad sound because it has no body to it. It has no center to the sound, no carrying power. It's breathy, like blowing over the top of, let's say, a wine bottle. Similarly, a sound that goes too close to the bridge, by the way, the wine bottle sound, the sort of breathy, asthmatic one, I got by putting the bow too close to the fingerboard. A sound that goes too close to the bridge, to me, it sounds like steel wool on glass. I call it a glassy sound. You're welcome to call it whatever you want. Just don't mix up your terminologies. It sounds like a buzz saw a little bit. Um, again, that's a useful tool that you will use once in a blue moon, usually for satirical purposes. The sound that you want is pure, full, with a center to it, and with enough bow speed, the bow moving across the strings fast enough, that the sound doesn't choke. Because how hard you press and how fast you move, if they are in balance, create a sound that has center and echo. That last up bow was not adequate. That last up bow had imperfections. So the sound that is like that, you'll notice my fingers were free to flex, my wrist was free to flex. If either of those things weren't uh, the case, if my fingers were rigid, if I were holding the bow too tightly, if my wrist were locked, my bow would be effectively a radius moving from a fixed point, and it would be moving in a semicircle, and it would get garbage like this. Which I and every other teacher in the country has seen roughly 4,300,722 times from about three students every day. Um, what you want to avoid that is to keep the bow parallel to the bridge, moving in a straight line and not losing that sweet spot on the string where the string is just tight enough to support the bow and just loose enough to move back and forth to vibrate. That up bow wasn't as good as the down bow. What I changed on the up bow was to control the bow pressure and to control the sounding point, to control where the bow is on the strings between the bridge and the fingerboard. If you want to do a slightly more challenging version of this lesson, of this exercise, you could even try different rhythms. You could try, let's say, one long note followed by two short ones and then repeat it.
if you choose to do that. Two warnings. First of all, make sure that your rhythm is not blurry. Right? That's not a rhythm, that's incomprehensible randomness. And second, make sure that you are using your full bow for the long note and a fairly small amount of bow, maybe a quarter, maybe a third of the bow for the short notes. my bow failed to grab the sounding point, not only was I aware of it, I made sure that the next bow stroke would be on the sounding point. So that's your challenge. Can you make some combination of rhythms on open strings without a single misfire? Good luck.